Hi, Stephen from Mona Disso. So NVIDIA has just formally announced their new Ada Lovelace 4000 series GPUs for desktops. And without a doubt, they do look rather amazing. Promising up to two times the performance in non-ray tracing games due to 70% more CUDA cores and up to four times in ray tracing games. And the MSRP price is very competitive, with the RTX 4080 starting at $899 for the 12GB model and $1199 for the 16GB model. And will be two to four times faster than the 3080 Ti. They say availability will be November 2022. The 1490, which will have 24GB of VRAM, will cost $1599 and will be two to four times faster than the 3090 Ti. And that will actually go on sale October the 12th. Now expect the usual scalpers and bots to buy them quickly. So prices will be higher like, like that we saw with uh, Ampere. Now I suspect the 4070 and the 4060 cards will be available next year. The 3000 series wasn't such a huge leap over the 2000 supercards, but I do believe that these 4000 series cards, you know, even in laptops, will be worth waiting for. And without a doubt, NVIDIA pushed hard the ray tracing capabilities of uh, Ada Lovelace, reaching 16 times performance boost in the past four years when Battlefield 5 was launched with it, whilst the number of transistors has only increased about, I'd say, about three times. The 4000 series uh, is built on TSMC's 4 nanometer process, has new streamers with twice the power efficiency, so this would be good for laptops. It has 4th generation tensor cores for better deep learning and 3rd generation ray tracing cores. Now these 3rd generation ray tracing cores bring real time path tracing and shader execution reordering. Now this latter bullet point is huge as it allows the GPU to do the ray tracing tasks itself, providing better shader and ray tracing performance. This combined with DLSS 3.0 can nearly double the frame rate compared to DLSS 2.0. Now they didn't come right out and say say it, but this slide does suggest that the RTX 2000 and RTX 3000 will not be able to take advantage of DLSS 3.0, and this is a is huge for ray tracing. They should have seen with ray tracing on the difference being uh, DLSS off and DLSS 3.0 uh, being on, and that was over four times as fast. They showed a clip in Microsoft Flight Simulator where they had uh, DLSS uh, 3.0 and ray tracing was on and it was getting twice the frame rate of having no DLSS and no ray tracing. So the push here with the new RTX 4000 is to make ray tracing games much faster. Now I do recall when it, you know, it all got launched four or five years ago and I would turn ray tracing off because the performance hit was pretty bad. Now things did change nicely with uh, with the RTX 3000 and DLSS 2.0, but still for competitive gameplay, many would keep it uh, turned off. Now with the RTX 4000, you may not uh, have to do that, and it does beg the question what AMD will bring to the table. Now AMD's RDNA 3 uh, RX 7000 series desktop cards will launch in November, and rumours are that they will reach close to 4 GHz boost speeds, which you know is pretty amazing. But as you all know, desktop performance doesn't always translate to what we see in laptops, unfortunately. Now, gone are the Pascal days, where we had close on parity. Now, the desktop 3080 has a TDP of 320 watts and 8,704 CUDA cores, whilst the mobile chip uh, had a max power of 165 watts and 6,144 cores. In my EVOC X170KM review, its 3080 got 12,444 points in Time Spy, whilst a desktop 3080 gets about 16,500 points. You know, about a 32% difference. So if an RTX 4080 is twice as fast as an RTX 3080 Ti, which gets a Time Spy GPU score of 18,800, we should expect about uh, 36,000 points on the desktop 4080, or about 290% faster than the laptop 3080. So we factor in the likely 32% difference between the desktop 4080 and uh, the mobile 4080, then the, the mobile card should score about 28,000 points, which is 225% faster than the mobile 3080. So NVIDIA's claims of twice the standard restoration speed of the 4000 series over the 3000 series is likely to play out in the mobile space as well, which is insane. Now factor in the extra ray tracing oomph, yeah, the 
you know, we should be able to get. We should finally be able to play ray tracing games easily on laptops, especially with DLSS. Even at the low end, an RTX 4050 will likely perform like a 140 watt RTX 3070, plus the added DLSS 3.0 and ray tracing capabilities. Now, one thing to bear in mind is what power the mobile chips will run at. MSI showed off the cooling on uh, the 4090 and it will use a vapor chamber and lots of heat pipes. So it is definitely going to take some cooling. Now, perhaps the mobile chips will be even further gimped. You know, I don't know. But I still think it's worth waiting for. Plus, as I already discussed in a separate video, you know, link in the description, Zen 4 will be with us shortly. Probably around about springtime is my guess. And AMD promised faster single core performance than Intel 12th gen with better power efficiency. And I'm sure Intel's 13th gen will also be a step up. Now we normally do see the Intel Nvidia refreshed laptops just after CES, so expect them around about the February timeframe. That's not too far away. And if you can't wait that long, then there's always sales, you know, usually from Thanksgiving all the way to Christmas as vendors offload their stock of the current laptops. So certainly exciting times are ahead. And as long as pricing stays in check, which, you know, they didn't when Ampere was launched, we could be in for a feast. Now, what do you think? Bye now or wait? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye now.